Okay, people uh, just coming in from the coffee break, but we're going to get this going if I could ask people to take their seats. And I'm going to hand over to John McLoon, who is Director of Technical Strategy for Wolfram Research Europe. And John is going to chair a panel on the development of technical ed education, particularly for the labor market. Uh, Dr. Mokhtar, please take the seat. Uh, John, people are just coming back in from coffee, but I'm going to get things going. And we have on the panel His Excellency Mustafa Mohammed Mahmoud, who is the Minister for Education, Vocational Training for Djibouti. We have Dr. Mokhtar Jaweli, who's the Chairman of the National Board for Technical and Vocational National Education in Libya. We have Ismail Yusuf Osman, who's the Senior Advisor for the Minister of Education, Culture and Higher Education, Somalia. And we have Habib Erez, who's Advisor to the Minister for Technical Education here in Egypt. Um, headsets, if you require, I think we might be doing a bit of English, Arabic and French all in one panel. John, I'll hand over to you and we'll try and aim for 12.20 if possible. Shukran. That's great. Okay, so this panel is about technical education and preparing for the labor market. And so I think perhaps the most defining thing about, uh, about that topic is how fast the world of uh, technology is changing. And so very briefly, I wonder if I could ask uh, each of the panel, uh, how are they planning to keep up with this ever-changing uh, uh, shift in the skills needed and prepare people for jobs that uh, may not even exist yet, but will when people leave education. And perhaps I could start uh, uh, with Mustafa. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Salatu wa salam wa rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Je voulais, euh, dans un premier temps, euh, remercier le, le gouvernement euh, égyptien et les organisateurs de, de, ces, de cet événement qui est vraiment euh, pour nous euh, une, une opportunité, et une possibilité d'exposer de, euh, de, euh, les, les réalisations et les difficultés que nous rencontrons en matière euh, de formation euh, technique et professionnelle. Et pour ce qui concerne Djibouti, euh, la, la formation professionnelle, le développement de la for formation professionnelle et de l'enseignement technique est euh, une nécessité. Une nécessité, pourquoi Parce qu'aujourd'hui, euh, Djibouti connaît euh, une transformation de, de son économie, euh, notamment euh, en matière de développement euh, des ports, donc euh, en matière de logistique transport, et de, aussi vu de, du fait qu'aujourd'hui, nous avons beaucoup de jeunes diplômés de l'enseignement euh, euh, général euh, qui ne trouvent pas du, du travail euh, dans l'immédiat, et euh, en fin de compte, euh, euh, aussi le fait qu'aujourd'hui, euh, les emplois à, à, à Djibouti, euh, surtout les emplois à, à qualifiés, euh, euh, sont occupés par euh, des non-djiboutiens. Donc vraiment pour nous, c'est une nécessité de former les jeunes, euh, des jeunes diplômés en matière de formation professionnelle. Et c'est l'objet de la réforme que nous avons entreprise en matière de formation euh, professionnelle et mettre en place un dispositif euh, euh, de, de formation euh, euh, de qualité. Et donc euh, nous avons une structure, une, une formation euh, euh, qui permet euh, à ce que les le jeunes du Boussien poursuivent euh, une formation initiale sur une période de trois ans, euh, ce que nous appelons les baccalauréats. Puis nous avons une formation de deux ans sur le CAP et puis une formation d'une année qui permet, si vous voulez, à, 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 à former des, des jeunes pour les métiers semi-qualifiés. Donc vraiment, nous essayons de pallier, de former les jeunes à tous les niveaux de qualification. Et pour ce qui est également de, de, du secteur de... Parce qu'on ne peut pas donner ou dispenser une formation de qualité sans vraiment travailler avec les secteurs privés. Donc également, nous travaillons avec, avec le secteur privé, les entreprises de la place. Parce que si aujourd'hui nous formons 
alors que euh, euh, les entreprises ne sont pas impliquées dans la formation initiale de ces jeunes, c'est sûr que euh, le produit que nous allons mettre à leur disposition ne, sera pas, ne correspondra pas par rapport à, leur, à leurs attentes. C'est qu'aujourd'hui, et qui est le cas dans la plupart des pays, à savoir le fait que nous avons une, une, une inadéquation entre, bien sûr, l'offre de, de formation et, 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 les, attentes, et les attentes des, des entreprises. Donc, vraiment, pour pallier à cela, nous avons euh, de l'identification des besoins okay. des entreprises. Pardon. Thank you very much. So, if I could turn the, the same question to Dr. Jawali. Um, do you agree that uh, industry is the guide for those skills, or is that something that comes from the ministry? وركزنا على ما ورد في تقرير المنتدى الاقتصادي العالمي عن الثورة الصناعية الرابعة، لكن كافي إلى توجيه الاهتمام إلى مهارات المستقبل والنظر إلى المهارات التي حسب التقرير ستكون غير موجودة في سنة 2025. وبالتالي الاستعدادات أو برامج التطوير أعتقد أن تكون مبنية على مثل هذه التقارير اللي مهمة جدا في استشراف المستقبل فيما يخص التعليم التقني الفني. Okay. Thank you. Well, maybe I could turn now to uh, uh, a more specific question, and perhaps I could go to Happy Biaziz, uh, uh, speaking for Egypt, and ask: Can you summarize the the Learn Improve Work program and uh, what you're you're doing with industrial partners and how you select those to make some of these kinds of improvements that we're hearing about? Uh, is it working? Yeah. So I would like first to welcome the valuable presentation of Djibouti, Somalia, and Libya countries. Um, according to how to integrate between the policies of the ministry and the labor market uh, directions, we have worked on two levels. The strategic level, which is on the policy level. Uh, we have contacted uh, most of the ministries in the country uh, throughout the Executive Council for TVAT in Egypt. And based on that, we have identified the strategic um, directions economically. So for example, in industry, we decided to focus on the engineering sector. In agriculture, we decided to focus on land reclamation and water technology and water management as well, and recycling field, um, and as well, of course, tourism. So the thing is that, and IT specifically, and in industry as well, we, the country has spent a lot of investment on the field of energy renewable energy and others. So this is where we started, we decided to start to focus on those strategic directions. On the other level, we wanted as well to work with the private sector. So we have created a type of public-private partnership. Um, it's not an, is an initiative, it is a foundation for the relation between the ministry or the country and the private sector. So this is the Learn, Improve, Work initiative and it's called the Egypt Manufacturers. So basically, um, we have been thinking how can we stimulate the interest of the private sector to work with us? And this will answer your question, John, regarding what do we do to cope with the, with the rapid uh, eco economy and the changing economy in the world? So the thing is that we decided to do a successful marriage between the country, the public sector, and the private sector. So uh, we've created new types of partnerships, such as the full partnership, which um, gives the opportunity for the private sector to communicate and to integrate and to cooperate with the ministry throughout rehabilitating the current, um, the current schools. And we're also giving them a lot of incentives in return. Uh, for example, the, the large companies are not, do not now have to uh, build their own vocation training centers they can utilize the current vocation training um, or the technical schools. So also to give you a bit of what we are talking about, in Egypt, our system is very huge in terms of technical education. We probably have around 2 million students only in technical education representing 53% of the education uh, secondary level only. So this means that 2 million students are enrolled in the system and we have almost 1,200 schools. The size of the schools are huge. So we are now giving the chance for the private sector building on the principles of the dual system, the German dual system, but building on it to, um, 
to support and as well to get the benefits of those assets that the country has. So we have created this full partnership and as well we have created another partnership which is called the consortium partnership. This fits for the SMEs, for many medium enterprises that would like to work together as a consortium in specific industrial field. They can work together and cooperate in specific schools that are around their companies. And as well we have uh, opened the, um, the floor for the door for um, small and micro enterprises where they can only share in terms of um, uh, cost sharing in the, in the field of training the teachers and such. So this is concerning the governance and the governance, the, go the governance is a very important question because that would make things go sustainable. And we have also provided a type of, um, of, uh, of school or a business model that would make the school financially sustainable for the ministry and as well for the, um, the, other, the other partner which are the, the private sector. And to maintain the quality, we made sure to have in every single school um, international standards. So now our certificates are not only, they are Egyptian uh, certificates, but they are internationally recognized. So the point of this, because we all know that um, the society look down to technical education in general. So we wanted to take their, to, to solve the problem radically and not to only talk about their importance, but really to make them feel that they, are, they have a valuable certificate. So that's why we are now cooperating with most of the countries uh, that are well known in technical education, such as uh, Japan, Germany, Singapore, to work with us uh, in this international recognition of the certificate that will make Egyptians internationally recognized. So this is basically, in a nutshell, what is the initiative that we took, uh, that we do, and actually we have also changed the name of the certificate. So before it was technical education, now we have, um, we have introduced a new type of schools which are called applied technology schools, and yesterday, just yesterday, we have, it's, I mean, the, the program has been very successful to the point that the students when, they, when they, they're applying and they even sleep in the school to make sure that they get the chance to apply and they get the chance to get enrolled in the school. Why? Because we have put very difficult stand, uh, standards and criteria for the teachers to get enrolled, for the students to get enrolled, and for the partners as well. So that we would make sure that this is the spearhead of reforming all technical education in Egypt. So we are actually working on, on the level of uh, the implementation, which are the applied technology schools, and as well on the foundation. I think that we can talk about this later. But according to those applied technology schools, what I want to say is that these are the spearhead. You know, when you have a forward in a game, so this is our forward in the game. Okay. So, so yeah, this is how we have Thank started you. it. Yeah. Um, I wonder, to what, to what extent is um, focusing on strategic directions like energy and, and water at conflict with entrepreneurship? Uh, if you're developing in, uh, in directions, focuses that are of strategic importance to the country, does that, does that oppose the idea of starting up completely new businesses and preparing people for that? Can you, can you repeat that? the question again? Because I didn't... Sorry, I, you talked about um, picking strategic directions like energy and water yeah. as your priorities. I wonder, is that a conflict with teaching entrepreneurship within technical skills? Why would that be a conflict? Water technology, you mean? Um, yes, but there are so many other areas. Does it, is it strategically sensible to narrow the field with a focus yes, in particular areas? In our learning framework, there is something called entrepreneurship anyway. That okay. they're taking, the students are taking entrepreneurship. So when they get to learn the basics of entrepreneurship in general, they would be able to apply it in any field that they want. And the student would have the chance in the beginning to also select the field that they would like to work in. I mean, they have different fields, they have a catalog of schools, and they select the school that they want and the field that they want. So if, if they have applied for water technology, so it means that they want it. Okay, thank you. Um, perhaps now I could turn to uh, a different uh, topic with uh, uh, to Ismail Youssef, and uh, um, you've, you've put a lot of effort into uh, building capacity within your ministry to help guide institutions uh, better in, uh, in the implementation of policy. Uh, can you speak to the importance of, of that capacity building within your ministry? Uh, 
وأشكر لحكومة مصر العربية لتنظيم هذا المؤتمر وكذلك أشكر لجميع الحاضرين وإذا رجعت إلى سؤالك فنحن في الصومال في وزارة التربية والثقافة والتعليم العالي لها أولوية خاصة لبناء قدرات متسبي لمدارس التدريب الفني والمهني وعندنا قطاع ومديرية خاصة لما يسمى المدارس هذه المدارس فنحن كما قمنا بفتح 11 مدارس حكومية لتدريب الفني والمهني لبناء قدرات لمنسوب هذه المدارس وكذلك تدريب المدرسين في مجال التدريب المهني والتقني وأيضا عندنا ما دام هناك الوطن مر بحروب أهلية كثيرة فركزنا على ما يسمى الإعمار لأن الإعمار مهم جدا عندنا وكذلك التدريب في مجال صيد الأسماك وكذلك الزراعة فنحن نقوم بجهود بجهود كبيرة مع أن هناك الموارد قليلة جدا والميزانية اللي وضعتها الحكومة في هذا المجال قليلة جدا فنجد بعض الدعم من المنظمات الدولية خاصة في الاتحاد الأوروبي في بناء القدرات لمنتسبي بهذا المجال Thank you very much. Um, so perhaps now I could turn to uh, Dr. Jawali. Um, uh, you're um, chairman of the National Board, and I wonder if you could speak to the role of the National Board uh, within Libya in, uh, in working to equip uh, Libyans with the skills that they need uh, for the future. الهيئة الوطنية للتعليم التقني والفني في ليبيا هي الهيئة المسؤولة عن مؤسسات التعليم التقني والفني العامة التي تتبع الدولة الليبية والتي يزيد عددها عن 500 مؤسسة منها حوالي 20 كلية تقنية و111 معهد تقني عالي و382 معهد فني متوسط هذه المؤسسات تخرج الكوادر في المجالات الفنية والتقنية يوجد بهذه المؤسسات ما يزيد عن مئة ألف طالب وطالبة وهي موزعة على كل مناطق ليبيا هدفها الأساسي هو تخريج الكوادر الفنية لسوق العمل الليبي ولكن توجهنا الأكبر الحقيقة هو لريادة الأعمال فاهتمامنا بريادة الأعمال يعطى كأولوية والهيئة الوطنية للتعليم التقني والفني هي المستضيف للأسبوع العالمي لريادة الأعمال في ليبيا وهي أيضا ممثل ليبيا في الشبكة العالمية لريادة الأعمال وتسعى إلى تعزيز ثقافة ريادة الأعمال وبناء القدرات في مؤسسات التعليم التقني والفني بالإضافة إلى نشر ثقافة ريادة الأعمال بين المؤسسات الأخرى هذا يعتبر أولوياتنا في التعليم التقني والفني بالإضافة إلى بالتأكيد دعم وتطوير مؤسسات التعليم التقني والفني المنتشرة في مختلف مناطق ليبيا. شكرا. Thank you very much. Um, perhaps I could uh, turn now uh, to uh, to Djibouti, and um, one of the challenges I think with technical education in particular is that it can be very prone uh, to teaching to the test. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what you've been doing uh, with building certification and accreditation to, um, to monitor and develop the skills, but without creating that, that problem. Un dispositif de, de formation professionnelle efficace est donc une nécessité. Du coup, nous avons engagé donc une réforme euh, de l'enseignement technique et, et, et de la formation professionnelle, notamment euh, par la mise en place euh, d'une vision et toute une politique de l'enseignement technique et de la formation professionnelle, où bien sûr, dans ces codes politiques, nous installons un cadre de travail où les, les, les responsabilités des différents acteurs de la formation professionnelle sont, sont, bien, sont bien réparties, à, à savoir les établissements publics, mais également les, les entreprises privées, mais également la société civile, également euh, les, les, les représentants des, des entreprises, notamment la Chambre, la chambre de commerce de, de Djibouti. Donc euh, une répartition est dans un cadre où tout le monde évolue avec une répartition des, des, des responsabilités. 
Et euh, donc, euh, pour ce qui est de, de, de la rédaction des référentiels euh, de formation, ces référentiels de formation, à la suite d'une identification des besoins, euh, sont rédigés. Et sont rédigés avec le secteur privé. Et dans le cadre de, de ce référentiel de, de formation, euh, non seulement nous avons le référentiel de formation, mais également le référentiel de certification. Comment exactement euh, 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 les, les, les élèves sont évalués. Donc l'évaluation, elle se fait euh, chez nous euh, euh, en deux temps, euh, puisque euh, pour ce qui est de la formation jusqu'au baccalauréat sur, euh, sur une période de trois ans, nous avons euh, une, une période où l'élève est amené à passer en milieu professionnel à peu près sur les trois ans, euh, une année presque complète où euh, sur cette période de trois ans, où il est amené à, à, à passer en, en milieu professionnel, c'est-à-dire en, en première année, il passe deux semaines en milieu professionnel, en deuxième année, il passe six semaines, et en, en, en dernière année de formation, il passe 14 semaines en milieu professionnel. Et donc, de, au moment de la certification et donc au moment de l'évaluation, euh, euh, l'élève n'est pas seulement évalué par euh, ses enseignants de, de, de formation, mais également il y a une évaluation propre faite par le, 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 le privé, les entreprises tuteurs, euh, qui, qui également euh, donc, euh, évaluent euh, et, et, et donnent une certification. Maintenant, euh, pour que euh, cette certification et ce diplôme euh, euh, soient un, un diplôme de qualité, euh, il, il va de soi que, 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 euh, que les, les, les secteurs privés interviennent. Donc, non seulement ils forment avec nous pendant la formation, mais également au moment de l'évaluation et de la certification, l'évaluation est faite en partenariat avec, avec, avec le secteur privé. Thank you very much. Um, perhaps uh, I could return to Egypt now and, uh, and ask about the, the challenges and uh, investments required to set up equipment and technology and to keep pace with the changes in, in the technology needed to be able to implement this kind of education. Can you ask a question again? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I wonder if you could uh, speak to the investments that Egypt's been making in, in technology and equipment in order to empower technical education. And is it a challenge to keep up with technology itself that you need to purchase uh, uh, staying up to date? I don't think it's a challenge because basically in the three-year school, you need to know the basics of the skills, not the very sophisticated skills. I mean, like in Japan, for example, they have very simple type of equipment, and uh, we, you don't really need to, when you teach the student the skills, the main skills at the qualification level, to, to teach them very sophisticated types of, um, of uh, on very sophisticated types of equipment. And in cases where the school is cooperating with a company or the ministry is cooperating with the private sector, they would have the chance to see the new technology in the company or in the factory. So this would uh, minimize the expenditure of the country or of the ministry on the school labs. This is one thing. Second thing, of course, people tell me, but it's very difficult that you would cover the whole 1,200 schools where you can fight cooperation with the private sector. However, here comes the virtual learning as a solution. And here comes ICT in technical education as a solution. The simulations and all the simulators and virtual reality can, ha can now be one of the main educational um, successful elements uh, in the technical uh, education and vocation training field because if we are able to provide on-the-job training in those schools who are cooperating with the private sector in some percentages, well, the rest, the virtual learning would even bring uh, the sense of reality to the students, and it happens in many countries. So I don't agree that it will be very expensive. However, I think it's, it's the, exactly the opposite. If we will be able to, um, to um, work on the efficiency of the expenditures on the equipment, and more, even more than the equipment is the teacher's training, because in Egypt we have very well equipment, by the way, but the problem is the teacher's training. It's the human capital not the equipment. Thank you. Um, perhaps I could turn back now to Somalia. Um, you have a challenging political situation. I wonder if you could comment on how much 
technical education is linked uh, to uh, reconstruction and peace, or whether it's something that should be looking beyond that to uh, a future beyond uh, the current uh, political situation. على مشكلتين مشكلة الاقتصادية ومشكلة الحرب أو الحروب التي نقوم بها على محاربة الإرهاب الذي يدعي بأنه إسلامي ولا ولا يوجد فيها هناك بيت إلا وفيه دخل حرب وكذلك بعض المناطق التي تسيطر عليها الإرهابيون فيها مشاكل لا يوجد فيها تدريب فني وغير ذلك ولا ولا مدارس وكذلك إلى رجعنا إلى موضوع ونحن في بلادنا بحاجة ماسة إلى تعمير واستفادة من المدارس الفنية أو تعليم الفني والمهني في إعادة بناء الوطن وإعادة الأمور إلى ما كانت عليه من قبل الحروب الأهلية فوزارتنا تقوم بقدم وساق لفتح مدارس على جميع الأنحاء الصومال لنجد في كل منطقة مدرسة أو مدرستين للتدريب الفني والمهني لأنه ومع كذلك عندنا ما يسمى الميزانية التي أعدت لهذه المدارس الفنية قليلة جدا من جانب الحكومية فبعض الهيئات التي كما ذكرت آنفا أن هناك الاتحاد الأوروبي يقدم بعض المساعدات لمساعدة استمارية المدارس الفنية والمهنية فنحن بحاجة ماسة لهذه المدارس الفنية وكذلك لفتح مجال للقطاع الخاص لاستفادة من هذه من هذه الحاجة فوزارة التربية والثقافة والتعليم العالي مع أنها تشكل وزارة واحدة بثلاثة مهامات أو أربعة مهامات منها وزارة التربية والثقافة والتعليم العالي والتدريب المهني فهذه هذه ما يسمى عندنا التراكيب الحكومية اللي عندنا فتدريب لا يوجد هناك وزارة خاصة لتدريب المهني فهذا كان يكون مشكلة كذلك لأن هي هذه التدريب المهني والتقني يعتبر عندنا قطاع قطاع من قطاعات الوزارة ومديري من مديريات الوزارة فلذلك كما ترون أنه لا يلبي احتياجات البلاد في هذه بالنسبة للتدريب المهني والفني. ونحن أيضا لا يوجد هناك جامعات من هذا المجال ويوجد في الصومال مدارس بعد مدارس المهنية والمدارس الفنية بعد الإعدادية هي يعتبر مدارس ثانوية من أولى ثانوي لرابع ثانوي يعتبر مدرسة فنية أو مدرسة مهنية فتتطلب هذه القلة المدارس المهنية إلى حاجة ماسة لنجد خبراء في هذا المجال وكذلك نجد من يقوم بفتح مجال للقطاع الخاص ليستفيد من هذا الفراغ من هذا الجانب. Thank you. Um, perhaps finally I could turn to uh, uh, Dr. Jawali again and ask uh, the role of industry in setting the skills and outcomes that we need from technical education. Should we be seeking guidance from industry about the skills they need, or should we be trying to anticipate the skills that they will need and deciding the curriculum for them? وبالتالي لو أخذنا ليبيا على سبيل المثال نحن نحاول بناء شراكات مع سوق العمل في التخصصات من خلال بناء مجالس المهارات التخصصية ولعل الأولوية أعطيت لثلاثة مجالات أساسية وهي البناء والتشييد 
والسياحة والضيافة والزراعة والصناعات الغذائية هذه أعطيت أولوية لكن الجميع يعلم أن الظروف التي تمر بها ليبيا الآن هي ليست ظروف اعتيادية وإنما استثنائية وبالتالي قد يكون التحرك والعمل في هذه الظروف ليس بالأمر السهل ولكن هذه أولوياتنا في التعليم التقني بالإضافة إلى ما ذكر من ريادة الأعمال هو بناء شراكات حقيقية مع سوق العمل من أجل الوصول إلى تحديد احتياجات سوق العمل من المهارات الفعلية اللي يتطلبها سوق العمل وليس تنبؤ مؤسسات التعليم التقني باحتياجات سوق العمل بالتأكيد هذه التنبؤات لن تكون دقيقة بقدر ما هي الاحتياجات التي يحددها سوق العمل أكثر دقة Thank you very much. Well, we're running out of time, so uh, um, I found this uh, very interesting and stimulating discussion. There's a lot of challenges going on. Uh, at Wolfram, we, we focus very much on, on the subject matter uh, as well as the technology uh, that's needed to deliver it. Uh, we had hoped to have Conrad Wolfram on the panel today, but he wasn't able to join us, so we do now have uh, a few words that Conrad recorded uh, to share with us if we could play that video now before we wrap the panel up. I hope you've had a productive session at MENA. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person. I'd really like to focus these closing remarks on the subject of mathematics and the required reform worldwide of the subject. You know, there are few aspects of education that mo are more central to the future than being able to have core computational ability, computational thinking, in order to interface with our new AI age. And mathematics is at the center of uh, being able to provide that. It's the core computational subject today, but it really isn't delivering. And worldwide, we're seeing the divergence of mathematics, the subject, from what's needed in the real world. And we at Wolfram have been at the very center of watching this as the world has moved forward and as the world uses our computational tools. In the region, you have a very exciting opportunity, really to leapfrog other countries in being able to make a change to this core subject of mathematics, combine it with coding. I don't know whether you call it mathematics or whether you call it computational thinking in the future, but whatever you call it, it needs to be a subject that's based on computers doing the calculating, and humans doing the higher level problem solving that's so necessary in our societies and for our economies. We're of course here to help. We are the leaders in figuring out how to make this fundamental curriculum change and also can help with technology both for that and for more traditional mathematics and coding with the Wolfram language, for example. So I look forward to talking to all of you uh, in due course in the future and uh, uh, John McLoon, who's, I know, chaired the panel today, uh, would very much like to be able to discuss these matters with you uh, while at the conference. Thank you very much, and have a good remainder of your conference today. So I'd like to extend on that and invite you to come and talk to us about our involvement in the Egyptian Knowledge Bank, providing content and technology, and our, our thought leadership on, on future of computational thinking. But it just remains for me to thank the panel for their valuable contributions and insights, and to uh, uh, wish you all a good day. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, John, for uh, keeping good time.